Hi, I'm Hannah Sharp. I'm a designer and illustrator and Imagine Room Make Replay participant. I'm here for Head and Heart Festival. We'll be talking to Adrian Armstrong, who's the head gardener at the Tropical Ravine. And we'll be chatting about how the ravine has been closed during the coronavirus pandemic and the effect that nature can have on our mental health. My name is Adrian Armstrong. I'm a gardener with Belfast City Council. And my main role is uh, to look after the, the Tropical Ravine, which is where we are at the moment. You can see all these beautiful lush foliage behind me, uh, beautiful tropical conditions, which are fantastic on a winter's day. And to be honest, any day of the week, uh, if you like the heat, this is the place to come to. Uh, the ravine reopened again in 2018 after a four year closure for a, a major restoration funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund Northern Ireland and Belfast City Council. So uh, we're very pleased with the, the results of that and, and what we have to work with now. So it's a, it's a great visitor attraction, but not this year, obviously, with COVID. So um, we've been closed for since March and it's been a very strange experience, but the, the plants don't seem to mind so much. <laughs> and how has your job role changed because of the lockdown? Um, well, the day-to-day -day maintenance is pretty much the same. Um, obviously, there's no engagement with the public because there, there's just myself and um, the, the other chap that works here, Lewis. And, uh, but we go along, we water the plants every day, we tidy up the dead leaves, we take off the whatever foliage needs to do, just prune the plants so they, the plants don't know that COVID-19 is rampant and, and no one has come to see them. You know, uh, I'm told that the, the zoo animals actually have realized there, there was no people looking at them and they were sort of quite agitated for a while because they couldn't understand why there was no movement outside their enclosures, but the, the plants obviously don't have the same effect. And if anything, I think the lack of people in the building has been to the benefit of the plants because it's meant we've had a very stable environment. There's been no doors opening and closing, no cold air coming from outside. Um, and the plants have responded to that and the, the conditions have been much easier to manage in terms of, the, of keeping the humidity high because you don't have that constant movement of air. So it's, um, it's had pros and cons really. The, the cons obviously just that interaction with, with people on a daily basis and, and enjoying their pleasure of, of, of coming into a place like this because it is a very different environment to what people would be used to. So uh, in terms of just uh, awakening their interest, particularly in tropical plants, you know, you, you don't have that same level of um, interaction outside, yeah, you know, when is the ravine opening again and so on, but not the same way when the visitor comes in and oohs and ahs and makes your ego feel good, you know, at the end of the day getting all the compliments. So, yeah, it's been a strange one. So, unfortunately, the tropical ravine is closed, um, but people still want to get out into nature and stuff, especially um, during the lockdown. Um, what do you think about that relationship between people and the environment and their mental health? And um, what's your experience of that? Well. All studies show that green spaces, open spaces, are very, very important for well-being and, and mental health. Um, studies have been done since the early 2000s just showing how important this is so that local authorities can plan for the future of, of spaces. And the, the gardens themselves and our, our other parks around um, during lockdown were left open, even though the, the car parking facilities may have been closed off and so on for social distancing. But the the City Council realised that, particularly in the urban environment that we live in here in Belfast, that the green spaces were very, very important for people to come and exercise in, to meet up in that social distance and just, just to get out in the fresh air. Um, personally, the, the time down for myself, you know, I actually use my local park, which I don't do normally because I work in one so I, I tend not to, to bother too much with my local park but I actually find myself going out for walks in, in Woodville which I usually wouldn't do and um, to be honest it's, it's something I've continued to do which is uh, a good sort of knock-on effect that uh, I am actually using my, my own local park rather than just telling people to use, to use their own you know. Um, so it's, it's been good all around. There's been other ways people have been interacting. The, the horticulture um, home gardening and that, you know, people have taken a real interest in their gardens, uh, particularly during lockdown when they were maybe furloughed or not at work and they suddenly had time to go out and do all the things that they normally shove into a weekend or ignore to the following weekend. And people were really enjoying horticulture 
a lot of our local businesses when they weren't open, some of them diversified into um, online shopping and, and deliveries and so on. So I think uh, people were sort of chomping at the bit to get their hands on compost and plants and so on because it was it was something to do. It, it sort of quelled the boredom, but at the same time, it also eased the stress. You know, horticulture is a great therapy. It's been used for a long, long time for, for various elements of mental health and physical health as well. So during that period when, when we were in lockdown, it was something that was accessible. And if you were very lucky, you know, you had your own garden to do it in. Um, what the knock-on effect that will be for the future, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I would say those who have started gardening will probably continue to do so for pleasure, mm -hmm. even if it's not for, for de-stressing, you know. And otherwise, um, once, you know, people were able to travel a little bit further, you find that they were more than willing to go out into the countryside to get that real sense of open space. Because living in a city, if there isn't a lot of green space around you, it can feel very heavy and and very claustrophobic and you do need fresh air and you do need to feel soil and grass under your feet, okay. you know. Definitely. And you said before, um, in years gone past, pre-COVID times, mm. that um, this space would have been used for maybe mindfulness and mental health groups with mm. Queen's, is that right? Something yeah, uh, for the last, I think, four or five years, not this summer though, we would do some work with Queen's with their, basically their office st staff, telling them what was on their doorstep. So they got out of the office at lunchtime just for a walk around, just to get away from the desk and to get away from the phone. A lot of people who work in an office environment, if they eat at the desk, they tend not to take a proper break. They tend to work as they eat. And um, so for Queen's, a very large organization and, and have a lot of admin and, and so on and office staff, to get them to wind down is very, very important. And so tying up with us here at the gardens is, is ideal because we're literally on each other's doorstep. And they would come in in groups and we'll take them around and we'll tell them about the history and the heritage of the gardens, explain to them why open spaces are so important, just really to, to cool the mind down. You know, the studies have shown that with, within 10 minutes of going into a green space that your stress levels reduce quite significantly and quite rapidly and you don't actually need to be doing anything in it you know come sit on a bench bring a book bring a sandwich even just go for a nice stroll around but change your environment and and sort of calm your mind and that that's what your green spaces are for they're they're not and well for us obviously they're a working environment but even at that we still feel the same benefits from it you know and when you go back into your own gardens and you start doing those tasks in your own gardens, they become meditative. You know, the, the constant repetition of something, so you sort of zone in, you focus in on something so simple and everything else then is forgotten. And it is a great way just to, just to wind down and to, and to chill and to calm. And I say, I couldn't recommend getting your hands in the soil more than any of this year. You know, it's, a, it's been a great boon to many people that, that we talk to. And, even just chatting to the public as we go through the park. People new to garden, they're asking you, I'm going to grow this, what should I do with this? And that, that's great because you get this exchange of ideas going as well. So it's, 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 it's say, even though it's been a strange year, there has been some good points from it. Yeah, and just on that, um, mm. it's been a really good year for nature because people haven't been going out as much and they haven't been, you know, producing as much CO2. It's been a great year for the environment. It has, and along with all the other things they leave behind as well, you know, um, it's almost like that period when we were in lockdown for five, six weeks, that the countryside got to breathe again and, you know, the, the small invertebrates and the, the small animals and the flowers and that, nobody tramping over them, disturbing their habitat. It's, it's just been a, just been a very sort of, um, And it's been a good indicator of how things could be if we were more respectful of what we have around us. And I think the fact that we haven't been allowed out to sort of tramp through it willy-nilly this year has been a good thing because I think it's made us more aware of the damage that we do. Mm -hmm. And certainly when you look at social media and so on and you see a lot of ones taking pictures of the countryside now when they go out for that bit of pleasure, they go, 
look at these people have left behind, isn't it awful? And you see a lot of groups now going out with the litter pickers in the bin banks and they do litter picks on the beaches, local countryside, verges and so on. And there seems to be a lot more awareness of, of what we're doing to ourselves, but also what we're doing to the planet. And say the, the lack of CO2 and other emissions. And you know, it's, it was great for a while looking up and not seeing any planes in the sky. And you know, the, the cars weren't as uh, abundant on the roads. And certainly, if you think about it, the, whole, the weather during lockdown was so much better as well, because the likelihood is that the pollutants in the air weren't creating the, the other elements that come with it, you know? So the, everything was just, as I say, despite the fact that it's been bad for, for a lot of people all over the world, there's been good points from it, and hopefully stuff we can learn from as well to carry on and respect nature, because obviously this year it's showing what it can do, and comes back to bite us, you know. And you just mentioned um, social media there. Mm. Um, it can be obviously used in a negative way against people's mental health, but mm. can also be used for positive things. And you've been using it yourself to kind of keep the tropical ravine in the public eye while people can't access yes. it. Yes. Now, strangely enough, this year we've been very successful in growing the um, Jan South American water lily. Uh, the one that we have is Victoria of the Longwood Hybrid which is a hybrid between Amazonica and Cruziana. And this is our third attempt to grow it. And ironically, the year that we do get it going, and it literally produces a flower like every four days, no one's been able to come in to see it. So that's where social media has come into its own. I mean, our Belfast City Council Twitter has been promoting it when it first flowered on the 23rd of June. There was a lot of interest from local media as well, including Gardner's Corner, BBC, David Maxwell came to, to do a lot of stuff with us, and um, literally you come in the morning and there's another floor and it's, you know, just the phone's out, the, the photograph's taken, and within minutes it's, it's up on the Twitter, and uh, as I say, just looking at the responses to it have been fantastic, you know, and uh, say this is one way that I'm sort of keeping the ravine in the, the forefront of people's minds, because once the doors close, it can be an easy place to forget about, so you've got to keep promoting your open spaces, promoting your, your parks and your gardens, telling people why they're important and why they should come to them and say, even though a fantastic building like this isn't open at the moment, we still have the rest of the gardens where people can come and relax and, as I say, just feel that wee bit closer to nature, get a few ideas for their own garden and, and talk to the gardening team as well because, you know, we, we kind of miss having the public around. And just kind of look into the future of the tropical ravine uh, during times where we're still grappling with COVID. Mm. What does that look like? And do you think that the ravine will be opening soon? Um, we're in the process of working a, a proper route through the building, getting the signage put in place. So I'm hopeful that we'll be opening soon. Uh, one of our sort of um, things that we have to contend with that most places don't is the environmental conditions because if we have a fogging system we have high humidity high heat and we need to get a little bit more advice on that as well as well as of because obviously once we bring people in we want them to be safe and you know obviously they will have to wear a mask coming through because it's a it's a public space it's like any other public space to have to, to wear a mask and just to keep themselves safe and to keep others safe and as I say, there'll be a one-way system, obviously social distancing at the, the two metre mark and so on. So literally, they will be just walking around a little crocodile, going around and coming down the stairs and going out the bottom door. So we're looking to make it as accessible as possible, to open up as much of the building as possible. Um, but at the same time, we, we have to manage the flow. And, um, but we're, we're in the process of doing that at the moment. As to when we open, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but once we're confident that we can open without any problems, I, I'm sure we'll, we'll get the word to go ahead. Yeah, hopefully that will be soon. It would be, it would be nice if it was before the end of the summer while the, the lily's still in the pond, at least you know people could, could get a little flavor of it. But uh, as I say, at the moment, I'm not entirely sure when, when we'll be opening, but we, obviously intend to reopen where it's important that we do.